Alrighty, I forgot to do this part in iRacing. Sorry, I just have the video. So the inputs are going to be a little bit obstructed because the Windows video player sucks now. Uh, but we'll do make do with what we got. So for the run-up lap here, I'd like to start out in this third lane. And then it doesn't really matter when you turn down. Uh, the only thing that matters is that when you get to pit entry right here, you want to start unloading your wheel. And as long as you're able to do that and get on full throttle, then you should have all the speed that you'll really ever need. So we'll do that. Then going into turn one here, I want to set up to where I'm using my brake to rotate. Uh, if you, uh, I'm holding about 40-ish percent brake right now and just trying to land the car in this second groove right here. So you see I land the car in the second groove, but that doesn't mean that I want to stay there. I just want the car to enter the corner under my heavy braking onto that part. So once I'm here, I want to turn down further, and I do that by dropping my brake from 40 to about 10 to 20%, and then I turn my wheel a little bit more. Uh, this isn't exactly how you want to do it for long run, but this is just how you want to do it for hot lap. So now I'm trying to make a late apex of the corner, and so once my car kind of makes that weight shift to where it wants to come down the hill now, that's when I pick up partial throttle. And you see right there, there's all it's always going to get a little bit loose. You'll, you'll see here, so the, the corner starts out kind of uniform, and then you'll get to a point right there where it's like there's almost like a part of the grass that seems to jut out. And it's where the car just naturally wants to lay the apex you'll usually get a loose sensation before there. So you need to be ready for that. You need to be ready to correct it when you see it coming. So you turn down and then as you get on that throttle, you want to unload the wheel so that you don't spin your rears. And then use up all the real estate that you have to make it a straight line exit. That is, this one was by far the best one too I got. Just late apex, so right on that point there straight line exit then three and four here i overcooked this a little bit but the gist of it is you really want to get onto the by the curb you really want to get by this curb and i think i just throttled up just slightly too early there you want to just stay by this curb stay pinned to it and then once you get to the pit exit you just kind of drive the car straight up you see how i had to make a lot of steering adjustments and stuff on exit there it was because I was a little bit too zealous with going full throttle. I went full throttle right here. You see how my car is coming up the curb? That means that I'm not gonna have the greatest angle of exit. You see how much I have to turn on this exit part? If I just waited that tiny bit longer, staying on the curb, like right on the curb here, then when I pick up the throttle, I will basically be able to drive the car straight and still make the exit. And so you see I lost a couple hundredths on exit there. Uh, just because of that throttling up too early, but the entrance is the same as one and two except you see I want to oops sorry I Want to land the car by the curb I'm not trying to land the car in the second groove anymore like I was in one and two I landed the car on the curb and then I just held the brake drag until the car weight shifted So the car stopped wanting to slide up the track the moment it stopped wanting to slide up the track half throttle And then I should have been a little more patient, but that's okay and we get to the start finish line. All right, now let's take a look at long run. All right, now let's talk about long run. So this is gonna be a lot more about saving that right front because the right front is always the thing that goes in North Wilkesboro, it just shreds it. So what I really like to do in North Wilkesboro is just let the brake turn the car as much as possible. You probably want to even lower the brake uh, throughout the corner, or sorry, throughout the race, because the higher you have your brake bias, the more you're gonna to have to turn that wheel on corner entry as the run goes on. You'll see that the car kind of tightens up. And that wasn't a very good lap to show you guys that. But I want to just use that brake to rotate the car. You see, like right there. I'm only losing about a tenth there to my best lap. That's really what I want. Three and four, especially. Getting right by this line right here, that's, that's very important. I'm trying to get as much rotation as early in the corner as possible using that brake. Well, I still can. And I almost cut, clipped the grass there. That's a little unfortunate, but it's very, very difficult, this track, because it seems like with all the bumps, it feels like no two laps are exactly alike. And so you got to really kind of be very flexible with your lines. Ideally, 
you want to get rotation on corner entry and then maybe diamond or late apex turn one and two and three and four you just want to ride the bottom as long as you can down here you see how we make up some of that time on back throttling up in turn four is just not recommended for long run because it, it gets you a very very little for how much it puts on the car oops sorry but yeah get back into the corner here you just roll this even longer than you think and then you just drive it up the hill like this at the end. That'll really help out your tires. You just don't want to throttle up early in turn four, especially. Turn two, you do want to do that because you'll get this turn back down and you kind of dime in the corner full throttle and it's not that bad. But here, if you full throttle here, you'll just slide up the track. So you never really want to go full throttle if it's causing you to slide up the track before corner race. That's why I do that now and there. Now, why am I not really arcing the corners? Because I think that, that also gets the car uh, a lot on the right front when it doesn't need to be. So I'm giving up maybe half a tenth per corner, maybe a full tenth uh, per lap. But as a result, I'm just not putting nearly as much time on the right front. It's, see what happens? Okay, that's the next thing I should be talking about. That's what happens when you overdrive the corner. When you overdrive the corner, all you can do is just straighten out the car and try not to heat up your rear tires because your rear tire heat really compounds throughout the race. So you really want to avoid wear on your right front, but if you avoid heat in your right rear, then you're able to have this, this mid corner a lot more uh, doable. All right, we'll do one more lap here. But yeah, just be patient on the bottom. You can be a little more aggressive on the exit too. Just try not to use too much wheel to get this little turn down. The moment you start using too much wheel there, the moment is when the right front will start burning off. And three and four, really plant your car by right here. Don't let that car slide up too early, even though it feels like you should be able to. All right, let's take a look at the tires. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of right rear over right front there. That's good because the right front really likes to burn off later on in the run. So as long as you keep it kind of shallow entries, roll the bottom, and turn three and four, you should end up like that. All right, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.